You know, this is a question that we sort of had to deal with, especially dealing with the intersex rights movement 20 years ago when doctors were incredibly uncomfortable really even talking with people who were not physicians about this. But one of the things that seems true is that in general, we want the world to be safer for children. And often trying to raise a child without a gender is not going to make their life easier. What I would generally recommend to parents is that it makes sense to look at a child and to say, we think this child is going to ultimately identify as male or ultimately identify as female. And when we do that with an intersex child, we do it in the same way we do it with every child, which is basically we take a best guess based on what we see and what we know. So when I was born, for example, and I, as far as I know, I'm female typical, but I, you know, I've never tested myself. My parents looked at me and said, oh, this one's a girl and raised me that way. There is, was some chance that they were going to be wrong about that, that I was going to ultimately identify as a male. But it was a reasonable guess to take. Now, do we hamper children by saying this one's a girl and this one's a boy? Yes, to some extent, the world, again, imposes those assumptions about girls and imposes these assumptions about boys. For example, there's the assumption that boys should toughen up all the time and, and girls should be allowed to cry. It's one of the ways we really oppress boys a lot of the time by telling them to sort of tough it out. But the thing I want people to understand is that gender isn't just about oppression. It's also about pleasure. It's about one of the ways that we experience the world, that we experience gender with other people who are identifying as the same gender. We experience the interaction with people who identify as different genders. The experience you have as a parent with a child will be pleasurable in part because of the way that gender plays out in your life, the ways that you are interested in things, the ways that you experience things. So I think it makes a lot of sense to try to raise children as boys and girls in the world, but to recognize that we can't always predict how things are going to work out and to allow for the fact that some children, for example, are going to identify as girls, but be interested in a lot of things we think of as boy things. And that's fine. That doesn't mean they're a boy. It just means they're a girl with a variation. So there, there is a lot of difference in the world in that way. And I, I do think it's very difficult as a parent to understand What's the best way to go forward with my child so that I leave open possibilities, but also don't leave open so many possibilities that they feel lost in the world? And that's what I worry about when we have the concept of raising a child with no gender, is the feeling of being lost in the world. I think that's something we have to consider carefully. I think part of the reason schools don't teach about it is because they're afraid to talk about sex at all, right? So uh, some schools actually do teach about intersex. I was surprised that my son, for example, in the fourth grade, his teacher, when talking about male and female development, actually mentioned intersex. And because my son actually had grown up hearing about intersex at the dinner table, helped the teacher through the topic. But in fact, there are a few schools that talk about it. I wish more did. I wish more did, in part because what children need to know is that even among the category we think of as female typical, genitals don't all look the same and bodies don't all develop the same. And that's true with males too, right? So what children need to know is that sex development varies even among the categories we think of as female typical and male typical, but it certainly varies more than that. There are people with different kinds of bodies that don't fit those two categories. It really is possible to talk to kids about this. My son, again, because he was being raised in a household where I was dealing with intersex all the time, was raised talking about it. And he, you know, he did not learn he was not supposed to talk about it so he learned it's okay to name parts as their real parts and to understand what's real you know he was the kid in preschool who said most boys have a penis and a scrotum and most girls have a clitoris and labia and i was like right most do but not everybody does